Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here from the Retro Future. Today we're going to be taking a look at something absolutely incredible. It's so fascinating. This is a Tezuka Asamu, Tezuka Asamu, <laughs> World Shop Limited Edition Game Boy Color, which does not exist. It could be a fake, could be a prototype. Let's take a look. Now before we go any further, I bought this on Sendico. Thank you to Sendico for sponsoring this video. I'm a massive, massive fan of Sendico, okay? And I've put my own money through Sendico unsponsored before. So this is a genuine sponsorship for the channel and I really appreciate them sponsoring this video. Essentially, Sendico is an intermediary warehouse that allows you to bid on items and buy items from Japanese sites. The main one, the most attractive one for us is Yahoo Auctions, which is essentially eBay of Japan. Now Japan, is the, the birthing ground of all cool stuff like relating to, to gaming. So it's a really awesome website that allows you to bid on those sites and it will ship them to a warehouse that they have in Japan and then on to you. And the benefit of that is that you can bid on multiple different items, send them all to their warehouse and then combine the shipping costs and then ship it on to you. There's a 500 yen charge per item, which is less than $5, and it doesn't raise or lower depending on the price. It's a fixed fee, so if the item is $1, then you're going to end up paying $6 or so, but if the item is $100, you're only going to pay $105. So it's a really, really awesome site. Check it out. There is some really awesome things on that website, so definitely a massive fan of Seneca. So I bought this thing, as I said, from Sendico. It was 16,000 yen, which is quite a lot of money. It's around $150, which is about 120, 130 pounds. I'll put the prices up on the screen. This is a massive gamble, okay? And it may never pay off, and I'm not interested in selling it anytime soon, so I don't really care. And uh, it was bought on a sponsored video with their money, so I'm sort of fine with buying it. But yeah, this is a Tezuka Asamu World Shop Limited Edition Game Boy Color, which should not exist. Now, it's common knowledge that there was a red transparent Game Boy Light, which was a World Shop Limited Edition for Tezuka Productions, which was sold exclusively in their stores. Now, it's absolutely incredible. It's a beautiful Game Boy Light, but the Game Boy Light and the Game Boy Color don't have the same button layout and spacing. Everything is different. The start and select, for example, is from a Game Boy Pocket. Now, the start and select on a Game Boy Color is far thinner in diameter, so they've had to adjust this image to cater for the different button layouts. Now, that's a cool thing because it actually exposes some more of the artwork and hides some of the other parts, but the hiding part isn't that interesting. The fact that it exposes more of the artwork is very interesting because they would have had to have had the original artwork to print onto this Game Boy. Now, as I said at the start, a lot of this is going to be speculation, but hopefully you can understand my facts because I'm banking on it being a prototype that was never put into official production. As I said, you can take a look around this button area here and uh, the doctor's buttons are actually on display, which previously on the Game Boy Light is not a thing. It's actually hiding one on the bottom left-hand side here. I'll show you some photos on the screen. Now, the other thing, as I mentioned, is the start and select. As you can see, there's a really nice little space around, a clear space where there's no artwork in the oval around the start and select. That does not occur on the Game Boy Light. It goes right up to the edge, much like the uh, the A and B buttons and the D-pad. So yeah, one thing is for sure, they had to have the original artwork. What is the likelihood of someone photoshopping this, taking a scan of the Game Boy Light or a magazine and photoshopping it? You know, that is rather unlikely in 1998. And to such accuracy, you know, there is absolutely zero blemishes on the artwork that they've done. So there's, there's no inaccuracies at all. So how have they managed to get the artwork? The next thing that is very interesting, why have I only got a front shell? Well, this actually did come as a complete Game Boy, but here are the pieces of the Game Boy, the rest of the Game Boy. Now it is in pieces because I did take this apart to verify that the actual shell was legit and other elements of it were legit. And as I took it apart, 
some very interesting things showed up. But before we take a look at the interesting things, let's have a look at this absolute disgrace. Why is a yellow Game Boy being painted white? Really, really, really poorly. Super thick, loads of fingerprints all over it. It's absolutely disgraceful. It was also missing the IR port and the metal shield at the back. So why is it incomplete? Why have they not got a full clear Game Boy. They must have taken this shell. If it was a homebrew, they must have taken it off of another Game Boy. My friend did tell me that potentially they could have called up Nintendo and said, I've broken the front of my shell and I'm going to need a replacement. I think that's fairly unlikely. Um, if I'm honest with you, I don't think Nintendo would have done that, but maybe they did and they managed to get a replacement. Now, I will prove to you in a second that this has not just been taken off of another Game Boy. Someone has had access to brand new stock of official Nintendo front shells. And I'll show you why in just a second. But before we do, another few things to point out. Why have the buttons been painted white? I did put a photo of this up in Reddit and some people were speculating that the buttons were painted white because in the factory, they were just testing to see what it would look like white. Now, I think that's rather unlikely, especially considering how poorly the spray paint job is. Also, they would have access to clear back shells or white backed shells, those do exist. So that if they really wanted to create an actual legitimate looking prototype, they could have done. Also, why would they have not put the cartridge shield and the IR port in there? I, I really don't know, maybe it is the case, but there's a few things to suggest that this was definitely not put together by an engineer and this is where it gets very very interesting now obviously i did take this apart to make sure that it wasn't just a complete phony baloney and uh yeah a few interesting things happened so these are the three screws that hold the motherboard into place now let me show you some photos of how i found those screws as you can see they're a not all the way down and b rounded to absolute beyond belief. Look at the state of these things. They're not, they're meant to be Phillips screws and they're literally just like a, a dome. It's absolutely ruined. You couldn't screw this. I got this out by taking some pliers, some, some cutters, some flush cutters and pinching the end and twisting it. And it took me about five minutes per screw to get it out. Now that is interesting for one reason. Why couldn't they get the screws into this shell? I'll tell you why. It's because no screw has ever been tapped into this shell before. That means that this shell was never used. It was brand new and they took it off of a shelf, I presume, and then did a print on the front of it. Now, as you can see, this thread here is the real giver. The threads don't even go halfway down. It's not even a third. It's, it's like two threads, two twists of the screw. And obviously they had the wrong screwdriver and they couldn't screw it all the way in because these are meant to be self-tapping screw posts. You can't really injection mold um, screw threads. So as you put the screw in and tighten it for the first time, it creates the threads and holds the whole thing together. Now the rest of these screw posts are fairly similar. They're you know, obviously not fully screwed all the way down. The ones for the tri-wings are pretty okay. Obviously they had the right size tri-wing, but for the three motherboard screws, it's absolutely not all the way down. The other thing is you can see these little posts to align the button membranes and the motherboard are bent. Now to me, that would suggest that this hasn't had a back on, on the back of it to keep it protected. And it's just been left around, things have been put on top of it and they bent the posts. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm really just looking for it to be legit there, but I think that is incredibly likely considering that this thing was not partied to an official clear back. Now, the other thing where it gets even more interesting, and I don't have any footage of this, but if you ever wanted the proof for whatever reason, Matt Lazarus from Next Metal was in a video call with me as I took this apart. Matt has an absolutely absurd collection of incredibly rare limited edition Game Boys. He has seen multiple fakes, multiple legits that have never been seen before and he's got them in his collection. So he knows and can spot a, a, a very immediate fake when he sees one, but this has been more difficult. And he said this, claiming that it's 60 to 70% looking to be legit. So that's quite exciting. Now, as I took this apart, I lifted up the screen with absolute ease. And Matthew said, wait, hang on. Was there no screen adhesive around the side? No, there wasn't. And look, there is no residue. Now I know a lot of you could say that I could fake that and uh, clean it all up with some isopropyl alcohol. 
Matt Lazarus can verify that this thing has never seen an adhesive uh, sticker to hold the screen into place. The screen lens is official, we've verified that. It's got a little number down in the corner uh, which is not seen on aftermarket lenses. So the screen lens is definitely official. There's four pretty hard evident proof that this thing was not made to fit on a Game Boy. It was just the front shell, hence why I've got it apart now because I don't want to put it back together and screw those screws in. So there we go, there, there's some of the, uh, oh, also the other fact that we've got as well is that the artwork, they must have had the artwork in order to print this because there are other things exposed that have not been seen previously on the red Game Boy Light. So that is rather bloody exciting. And incidentally, they held this thing in with sellotape, which is a very unique way of holding a motherboard in, but I don't think that any of this really has a lot to do with this. If I'm honest, I think someone has just got their hands on it, whether it's a kid who didn't know what they were doing, that would suggest the poor painting and the rounded screws, and their dad worked for Tezuka Asamu on Nintendo. I don't know, that is really just speculation, but I think that's quite likely. Now, a few other things to talk about as well. I bought this from Japan. Now, Japan is the place where these exclusive Game Boy Lights were sold. I didn't buy it from a seller that had other Game Boy related items. I think they had one or two Game Boy games, but the majority of their stuff was furniture. Also, the print is very high quality and has damaged in the same way that we see on the official Game Boy Lights actually released 100% by Nintendo. You can see that it's sort of chipping off as opposed to wearing down. And you can see the back of the artwork is not colorful, it's white, so for anybody who may know about printing, maybe you could tell me in the comments what that could possibly suggest. But yeah, the quality of the print is absolutely insane. And it is not raised in any way, you can't feel it, uh, there is no edge to it. Uh, it has worn out a little bit up here, which would suggest its age, it's not been recently created. Now, one other thing that is a little bit detrimental to its potential legitimacy is where it says Tezuka Productions at the bottom, you may be able to see that that is not straight, which is a bit disappointing because it's unlikely that Nintendo would have gotten that messed up. That is probably gonna conclude this video. I know a lot of it is just complete speculation and we're really probably never gonna find out unless we manage to contact Tezuka Productions, which we are working on, but for now I just wanted to ramble on and show you how cool this thing is. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think. There are a lot of people who say that they could repeat this with some stickers and some clear coat. I don't know, I think that's fairly unlikely. It does have a slightly weird finish to it, um, but the more I look at it, the less the finish looks weird. Additionally, on the back, it has the same finish, so potentially the person who was painting this clear coated the whole thing. Um, I really don't know. Also, where the chips are, you can't feel that, which would suggest that maybe someone has gone over this with clear coat and then it's filled up those chips to, I don't know, protect it. I really don't know. There is gonna be so much speculation with this thing. But there we go. That is gonna wrap up this video. I've already rambled on for 17 minutes, so I really hope you've found this sort of interesting. Maybe together we can work out what it is and, and find out if it's legit, if it's not. I might be biased because I want it to be legit. Thank you to Seneco for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Big thank you to Next Metal on Instagram for helping me with this. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.